So this is what it's like to be a part of the Beat Writers Only session talking to Jerry Reinsdorf. First, he will give a statement about the shooting that happened last Friday at Guaranteed Great Field um, and some information that he was allowed to say, apparently, uh, from interim police commissioner. Uh, and then we have the statement on Chris Getz and then the back and forth with the Beat Writers. Here is Jerry Reinsdorf. The two things I want to cover first. One is this office is not normally this clean. <laughs> <laughs> Between Riper and my assistant, they decided to clean it up. The, the other thing is the gun story. Uh, I spoke to Superintendent uh, uh, Waller last night, and he authorized me to say that uh, regardless of what anybody has said up till now, they have not ruled out that the shots came from outside the ballpark. Uh, and and you, you, know, you can call him, contact him, and he'll verify that. Um, they're, they're still investigating. Uh, I don't want to get into specific facts while they're investigating, but we've really done a deep dive into this. And there, I don't see any way in the world that the shots could have come from inside the ballpark. But let's let the police continue with their investigation. Uh, at this point, all the superintendent is prepared to say is that they've not ruled out that they came from outside the ballpark. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? Um, <laughs> yeah, you would. Of course. I'll, I'll ask you later. <laughs> um, it's, I, I don't want to ask anything about the police investigation. If anyone else does, you know, stuff. Uh, okay. And, and let's talk about Chris. All right. Uh, can you... Can you no, I'm going to... Oh, you're going to have a statement? I'll have a statement. It's fine. We didn't talk about that. Okay, then you can ask your question about Chris. <laughs> I just want to go through what the process was. Um, lo lo long before I even thought that I'd be making a change, I was very well aware of, the, of what Chris was doing in the minor leagues. Because I told a lot of people, for the first time ever since I've been here, we were teaching baseball in the minor leagues the way I wanted it to be taught. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been watching baseball, Major League Baseball since 1946, and I'm absolutely convinced that more games are lost than are won. And I think you guys have been watching long enough to know that that's true. You know, you don't mind when somebody beats you, but you hate it when you get beat. And, uh, and going back, all the way back to, uh, to Roland and Al Goldis, I wanted baseball taught in the minor leagues a certain way where people understood what they were doing, they understood you know, what's the right thing to do in a certain situation and nobody ever did it right until Chris came along and, and this I observed you know, a couple of years ago I was thrilled with it. Okay, so that's just you know, in, in the background then when I, had, when I finally came to grips with the idea that maybe I had to make a change. I still didn't know that I had to make a change. So I started, I started talking to everybody in the baseball department, uh, almost everybody uh, in the baseball department, uh, just wanting to know what they were observing. What, 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 you know, what do you think ought to be changed? What, what's good, what's bad? Uh, and Chris was one of the people that I talked to. I talked to him at great length. I talked to a number of other people in the baseball department. Okay, so that, then, I started getting convinced that I had to make a change, and a change killed me because it, it wouldn't have been any harder for me to fire my son, Michael, than it was to fire Kenny, because Kenny was my son, is still my son. And one of the last things his father said to Kenny when he, when he was on his deathbed was, well, you have a second father. So th th this, was, this really killed me to do it. But it, obvi it became obvious that it, had, you know, that, that it had to be done. So when, when I came to the conclusion that we had to make a change, I started thinking about who's out there. You know, you, 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 don't, you don't make a change unless you know that you're going to be able to do something that you're going to improve. So I pretty much know who all the potential candidates were out there. And there's, and there's some good guys out there. There's no question. There's some good guys who can be general managers and have been general managers that are going to be general managers maybe even this, this next year. And so my... my, my, my my, my first feeling was, okay, I, I'll, I'll interview an internal candidate, and then, I'll, I'll, then I'm going to ask permission to talk to all of these uh, other guys. But the, 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 that moved me to the thought that, what is it that I owe to fans? And I think what I, one of the things that I owe to fans is to get 
better as fast as we can possibly get better. The speed is of the essence. I, I don't want this to be a long-term proposition. And in the meantime, I don't know how many conversations I had with Chris, and it, 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 it became clear to me that he would be one of the major candidates along with these outside candidates. And then when I started thinking about the speed that I owe the fans, I realized that if you bring in somebody from the outside, it's going to take him a year. He's going to have to evaluate everybody in the organization. I, I could bring Branch Rickey in if he was available. Uh, and, and he'd have to evaluate everybody. So you'll, you'll, lo you'll lose a year. And, and here I had somebody inside who was very, very competitive and, and it might even have been the guy that I would select if I had to talk to all these other guys. And so the thought, you know, so I came then to the conclusion that if I've got a guy inside who can do the job, why not? Why not do it inside and save a year? And that's that's basically how I got to Chris. Now go ahead and ask me whatever you want to ask me, and I'll, and I'll answer whatever I feel like. Do you <laughs> plan on hiring a uh, baseball, a former baseball executive to work with Chris, and you and Chris collaborate on uh, that type of uh, hiring if indeed it is? That would be Chris's call. I'm, I'm not planning on bringing anybody in. If Chris decides he wants to bring somebody in, that's his call. As you thought about the process, did you ever think about, I mean, maybe there was some value in talking to outside people just to get a fresh perspective from the outside on the organization? Oh, I've talked to some people outside, not as candidates, but I've talked to some people outside about what they thought of our organization. And that was part of one of the reasons why we made a change. Gary, why uh, August 22nd? Why that date in particular for Rick and Kenny? And, and how? What, what was the feeling on why that change had to happen? You, you said it in the press release, but now that we're talking to you, what was the feeling on why that had well, to happen? Well, first of all, I wanted to give Chris as much time to get started. I mean, we, we, we've got, you know, end of season is going to come up. Free agency is going to become an issue. We've got the general managers meetings, we've got the winter meetings. I wanted to give him as much time as possible. And the, uh, the second reason was I wanted to give Rick Hahn as much time as possible to get on somebody else's radar rather than, rather than wait till the end of the year. But, but the number one reason was why not give Chris as much time as possible? How would you describe this 2023 season? 2023 season was my 43rd season in baseball. It was absolutely the worst season I've ever been through. It was a nightmare. It's still a nightmare. It's embarrassing. It's disgusting. All the bad words you can think of is the way I feel about the 2023 season. Absolutely, it was just, just awful. Why do you think it went this way? Well, it's hard to say, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but in the beginning of the year, we had a lot of injuries. We, got, we had a lot of injuries. And, and we also, you know, we were, if you go back game by game, we were one hit away from maybe winning another dozen games. Uh, so it wasn't that, we, we really, it wasn't that bad, but somewhere along the way, it just spiraled out of control. Uh, some of it was, some of it was the, uh, uh, the clubhouse, and I, and I think that we've corrected that. Um, and so, some of it, was, some of it was, was bad luck, some of it was just people not playing up to, to their potential. But it, it, it was a nightmare. This, this season was absolutely uh, a nightmare. I know the uh, manager doesn't deserve as much credit as he gets when they're winning or as much blame when they're losing. But with that said, and this is for you and Chris, I mean, will Pedro be back next year? Is that still being evaluated? or? Chris's call. Well, that'll be Chris's call. When you get a chance to talk to him, you can ask him that question. Okay. What are your expectations in terms of how quickly it can go from a nightmare that you've had this year to what you want it to be? Well, I, I don't want to make predictions, but in this division and with the core of talent that we have, I would hope and I expect that it'll get, the next year will be a lot better than this year. But, you know, how much better? I don't know. But you, you look, look at the core of this team. And, 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 if, and if we can get them all on the field, and, you know, and one, one of the things that we're, we're doing this year, it's a little different. You know, every year we send players home with, with a plan. This is what you got to do. What we're going to add this year is we're going to police these plans. We're going to make sure that the players are following their plans. So when they come to spring training, they're, they're, they're ready. We're not going to take their word that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So you know, given the division and given that we have a, a really good core of players, I would expect next year will be better. Are you going to be committed to uh, spending what it needs 
to be spent for pitching that you don't have in the organization? Well, you know, we were already spent a lot, we spent a lot of money this year. People talk about why won't the White Sox spend? I think we had a payroll of one hundred eighty-five million dollars this year. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we will we'll do what Chris thinks that we ought to do that that will make us better. I mean, look, we're not going to be in the Otani race. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. But uh, and, and we're not going to you know and, and we're not going to sign pitchers to ten-year deals. But we're going to try to get better, and that means trades. It, mean, it potentially means free agents. It, it means playing you know smarter baseball. It means a lot of things. So we're going to you know I don't have a lot of time left. I, I don't want I don't want to go through a long rebuild. I, I only expect to be here another ten years. And I want to. You said that ten years ago. I know. <laughs> it's a, so there's no rebuild. I mean, this is hmm? kind of. There's no rebuild. This is you're I, just gonna I, try I, to well, what you got. Well, you know, everybody talks about when you build a building, the foundation comes first. We got a foundation here, so uh, we're, we're, we're not going to take the guys that we have now and just clean out and start over again. We're definitely not going to do that. You felt the need to make a change folks from the outside see that Chris has been here the last seven years. What about him makes this a change from, from the guys who were previously in his, in his spot? Well, he, he has his own ideas about what, you know, what, needs, to, what needs to be done. Uh, Chris has been responsible for the minor leagues. He hasn't been responsible for the major leagues. And, he, and, and, and by the way, his job invo involved taking players who were handed to him and making them better. He had no responsibility in acquiring the players that he had to work with. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's been kind of quiet, but we made, we made a change in the scouting director a few years ago because we felt that we weren't, you know, we weren't through the draft. We weren't getting the players that we wanted to get. We made a change a few years ago. The players that have been coming in under this new scouting director are an awful lot better than we'd seen in the, in the past, but, but they're at lo they're at, they're, most of them are at lower levels, although I think we have some we have some pretty good stuff at you know at, at, at the upper levels that are not that far away, but I, I you know I heard on some telecast or podcast or something that I inadvertently watched that the, you know, the White Sox farm system wasn't ra highly rated. First of all, we have produced a lot of players to the big leagues that came through the farm system. I mean so. Y y y that's one way that you that, you know you evaluate a farm system is, is has it been producing has it been producing players and it has but but the quality of players that have come in in the last few years are pretty darn good and uh, you know so I, I think the, the future looks good. Or is it about the way you mentioned that you like what you've seen in the farm system the way that things are being done? What are some of those things that that you that you like or are impressed? Well, by? what I like is players are being taught how to play baseball. How to, play, how to play baseball. You know, one of my favorite players over the, you know, over the last 10 or 20 years was David Eckstein. David Eckstein couldn't run, he couldn't hit, he couldn't throw, he couldn't field. There's only one thing that he ever did, and that was beat you. And that's what we're trying to develop in the, in the minor leagues. And I, and I stole that from Brad Rickey. He said that about Eddie Stanky. But, then, but, 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 but that's... That, that's what we're looking for. Players who, who don't beat themselves, who don't beat themselves, who get the most out of their ability and let the other team beat themselves. And what, what Chris has been doing over the last seven years in the minor leagues is educating players as to what to do. What do you do? You know, when you're, when you're out there in the field at, at third base, what, what, what should be going through your mind? What am I going to do if the ball sit to me? What am I going to do if the ball sit to my left? What am I going to do if the ball sit to my right? What's, what am I going to do if the ball if it sits directly to me? When you watch baseball games, you see very few players you can tell are, are doing that, that they're thinking about that. Well, he's been teaching that kind of stuff. He's been teaching uh, uh, players who are on first base to be looking at the outfielders and seeing where they're playing, to know what their arms are. That's, that's the type of thing, to play smart. It's good to see uh, Tony's healthy, obviously. Um, what is his involvement? If any, in the organization right there. It, 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 I'm glad you brought up Tony LaRusso. Uh, I am so sick and tired of reading that bringing Tony LaRusso back was a mistake. Tony LaRusso came back in 2021. Does anybody know what we did in 2021? 
Did anybody remember we won 93 games? We won the, the division by 13 games? Well, was that a mistake to bring Tony La Russa back? Last year, he was sick. The man had a heart problem. He had cancer. I mean, you didn't see the Tony La Russa last year that we saw before that. Remember, this guy has won, as a manager, more games than any other manager in the history of baseball who had an over 500 record. Connie Mack had won more games, but he also lost more games than anybody. And he was the owner of the team. He was like me. He couldn't be fired. But So, so, so I, I, I reject the idea that it was a mistake to bring Tony La Russa back. We won a division with Tony La Russa. Now, with respect to this involvement, Tony had nothing to do with the decision to fire Rick or Kenny. Not once did he ever say to me, you ought to get rid of these guys. Now, I did ask him, as I asked a lot of other people, give me some names. You know, give me some names as I was, as I was building my, my list. But Tony wasn't, a, he, he, the, the only way Tony found out that Chris was going to be the manager was I told him. He was not, a, he was not involved in the process. Now, going forward, T Tony has, will not have any decision-making authority in the organization. But he's a tremendous asset. He's a tremendous asset. So if Chris wants to talk to him or Pedro wants to talk to him, they can talk to him. If they don't want to talk to him, they don't have to talk to him. To him. They, or, or, or if they do talk to him and he makes a suggestion, they can follow it or they can not follow it, whatever they want. But it would be stupid not to have this man available to Pedro and to, and to Chris if he's willing to be available, and he is. You always said don't make a tough decision unless you really have to mm -hmm. and think it out. At what point uh, did you get to that uh, thinking on Kenny and Rick, and was it a collective? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by collective. collective. In other words, did you lose confidence in both at the same point? Well, I, I made the decision a couple of days before we announced it, but I, but I spent a month thinking about it and talking to people inside and outside the organization. And I considered, very, I considered you know, a variety of alternatives. And, you know, one alternative was to do nothing. Another was, was to keep Kenny and let Rick go. Another was to keep Rick and let Kenny go. And another was to let them both go. And I came to the conclusion that it would be better to let, you know, to let them both go and have, a, and have a fresh start. Was the dual decision-making process a problem there? I mean, they seemed to work decently together, but was that a problem that you saw in the Well, later? I think they worked decently together. I, I believe, and I did believe, I still believe, that if I had kept them in place, that they had the capability to rebuild the organization. But one of the things that a number of people told me was that you may believe that, but the record's the record. And, you got, and, and, and I was urged to make a decision by quite a number of people just based on the record. I, I still think they could have brought it back, but all right, the record's the record, and the best thing to do is to, to, you know, to, to start fresh. Although it's not a complete fresh, because we still have an awful lot of people that are here that I expect that you know, Chris will keep and some that he will not keep. Do more uh, resources need to be devoted to farm system and player development and scouting and all the things that are available now to to minor league operations. Do you I don't think that? there's anything any resources that are not available to them. Chris Chris may well, Chris has that sole responsibility for who works in the minor leagues, so it'll be up to him if he wants to tinker with it. Uh, you know, I, I I think one thing we we should be doing though is you know there were a lot of scouts that were let go over the last few years by organizations that are analytics driven. And we ought to take a look and see if there's if there's some gems out there that we could add to our scouting staff. Uh, since uh, I can switch gears for a minute, there was an article that came out recently about the future of this ballpark, about whether or not you guys will stay beyond the beyond the lease. Uh, can you add anything about what your perspective is? I know there's still another six years or something well, left on it. First of all, somebody at Cranes decided that, that he wanted to write. That the White that the, you're looking at the Bears that the White Sox lease, you know, has six or seven years left to go, and the White Sox have some options, and they might move out of the city, they might move out of town, they might go to Nashville. That wasn't us. That was a guy at Cranes. Now, I, ever since the article came out, well, I've been reading about that. I've been threatening to move the team to Nashville. I mean, that, that, that article didn't come from me, but it's obvious if we have six years left, I think that's what it. 
is we got to decide. Are we, you know, what's what's the future going to be? And you know, we'll, we'll 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 get to it. But I've never I've never threatened to move out. We we haven't even begun to have uh, discussions with the Sports Authority, which we will have to do soon. You've, uh, you've you said forty three years in baseball. I think you just yeah. said so. You've seen good, middle, and bad during that time. Yeah. What is your reaction to some of the fan reaction to you and the team this year? Well, if I were a fan, I'd be pissed. I'd be very angry. Uh, but, but at the same time, this is the first really, really bad year. We won the division in, in 21. We were 500 last year. That's nobody's goal to be 500. But but that that's still average. This is the first disaster. This is the first real disaster. Uh, but if I were a fan, I, I, I would not be happy. I have a hard time watching these games. There are some nights... There are some nights when I, I don't even watch the game. I record it, and then if we win, I watch it. I mean, so, because I think, first and foremost, I'm a fan. I didn't get into this game to make money. I got into it because I love baseball. It was in my blood. You know, I remember, I've been, as I said, I've been watching baseball since 1946. I was at Ebbets Field when Jackie Robinson played his first game for the Dodgers. And, no, this is a lousy, horrible year, and the fans have a right to be upset. But hopefully they'll give us they'll give us some time and, 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 we, and you know I think we'll make it better do you have any different perspective on wanting to win than you did when you walked into your offices across the street in uh, 1981 I didn't have an office across the street there was no room for it <laughs> <laughs> well it probably is more of an urgency but but you know when Eddie and I came in in 1981 it, you know what, we, what were we? We were two fans who thought that we knew more than the people who were running the team knew. You know, the, the, and then and then in our you know we, we, in, ni- in 1980 the team was 70 and 90. We get here in 81 and, and even with the strike we went, we're over 500. Then we won 87 games in 82. We won 99 games in 83. We won the division. We thought, hey, this is easy. You know, we're, we're, we're two smart guys. And, but I remember Jerry Kuzman telling me, enjoy the moment, they're few and far between. And it never dawned on me it'd be another 10 years before we got back to the playoffs. But obviously, uh, since I'm older, I feel more of a sense of urgency. But, but, but I wanted to win from the first day. I mean, if you ever watch, watch if you ever sat with me during a game, you know, you'd see somebody that, that wants to win, even with 30 games under 500, I still want to win the games. You, I mean, I can tell, I guess, I mean, I think I know the answer is with your passion for baseball, but like, did you ever watch this year and think this is so frustrating? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go do something else with the, you know, the, you know, the last few the last years of my life, and like go do something more. Did you ever think about getting out, and selling? Oh, I'm gonna couch this so, so, so nobody writes that I thought of selling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> friends of mine have said, "Why don't you sell? Why don't you get out?" And my answer always has been. I like what I'm doing, as bad as it is. And what else would I do? I'm a boring guy. I don't play golf. I don't play bridge. What else would I do? And, and, I, and I want to make it better. I want to make it better before I go. How many changes do you think need to happen on the field for you guys to be better next year? Yeah, that's, that's up to Chris. But it doesn't strike me that there's a lot. I think, I think we'll get better internally. I think we got a better clubhouse. I think, I think the, some of the problems that we had in the clubhouse with some players that we that we brought in contributed to it, uh, but I, I think there's, look, look, it looks like Wakata may be coming back to what he was. Andrew Vaughn's only going to get better. I, I, I think we have a good core. Chris can build on it, but you can ask him. I'm not. Uh, those aren't my decisions. So you said this in the press release. Chris will have full autonomy and in, in the. Not Except when it comes to spending money. <laughs> That's enough. So full of but, that doesn't, but every owner reserves that right. right. Yeah. Every owner reserves that right. So no Otani. No, 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 excuse me? So no Otani. No Otani. Well, that's absurd. Uh, but but, but uh, now I've lost my train of thought. I feel like Mitch McConnell. But, uh, <laughs> How about we go one more for Jerry and then we can get you guys back. Do you expect you know? to uh, pick up Tim's contract and be your shortstop? That's, that's his decision. That's his decision. Fine, just one more. You, when you talk to um, when you talk to Chris in, in the press release, it was a fair point saying about a single decision maker. Have you changed your thoughts and process in terms of what a front office should look like in, in this game, in terms of like the setup and everything? Well, you, you change your mind, every, you know, over the years as th- th- things evolve. I think we had a great combination 
and, 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 and Rick and Kenny. Uh, but I think that Chris, Chris's skills are body the skills of both of them. Uh, Kenny, Kenny I, was a great talent evaluator. Chris's, uh, Rick's skills were negotiating contracts and uh, dealing with the media and uh, stuff like that. I, my feeling is he can, he's got both those skills. Can you just, uh, your message to the fans, what would that be? If you're sitting at a bar in the, in the area having a drink with one, what would your message be to the guy? Drinking a Perrier? No. <laughs> My message is we're going to do everything in our power to, to, to get back to where we want to get to. That's, that's, that's the message. Hey, if, if we don't succeed, it, it won't be for a lack of trying. I mean, nobody, likes, nobody wants to be bad. We've we got to get better.